The Jetway GTX 760 front palette caught me a bit by surprise, as it turned out to be a bit more powerful than what I expected. And while this sample looks quite pretty, testing it turned out to be a bit more tricky than what I hoped. I'd like to say that this is because I failed to fully repair the car that was bought as defective, but I'm not so sure. I'll try to explain it better as we go through this video. If you're interested in the GPU details, then feel free to pause, the GPU-Z windows scene on screen should provide those. I will mention the 2GB worth of VRAM, GDDR5 by the way, and the 170W rated TDP. Keep in mind though that not all games stress the car to its full TDP, a lot of them remain at 140W or even less. The cooling solution that Pellet opted for is a Finsta coupled with two fans. This assembly contacts only the GPU. The integrated power stages were supposed to have a small aluminium heatsink on their own, but my sample came without it and I had to fashion out a replacement. I can't tell if leaving the memory without any contact to the Finstack was intentional, especially after realizing that the aforementioned VRM heatsink was missing. Oh, and I also had to fashion out a replacement for one of the screws that kept the car together. The temperatures would go as high as 70C for a delta over ambient of 45C when using the default fan curve, in heaven, and 75C, which is a delta over ambient of 50C, in fur mark. This latter test is where the card pulls a constant 170 watts, and the performance is limited by the allowed power draw. On a few occasions, the video card will be bottlenecked by the test system that uses an i7-4770 equivalent Xeon and 32GB of system memory running in dual channel at 1600MHz. The FPS scales well with the resolution in Rainbow Six Siege at low settings. The game is playable at 1080 resolution and 100% render scale thanks to the average FPS of 86 and the 1% lows of 66. Lowering the resolution and even render scale to 50% can drive up those two metrics to 184 and 124 FPS respectively at 720 resolution and 50% render scale. You can probably stick to 1080 though and tweak the render scale if needed. Doom Eternal performed appalling however. At 1080 resolution and low settings, the average stayed in the low 30s and the 1% lows were not even cinematic. Having the pixel count did not do much and the game barely averages 47 FPS. This game needs more performance and the GTX 760 does not deliver. I like how Fallout 4 runs on the GTX 760. One can get playable frame rates at either 1080 resolution and the high settings preset or 1600 x and ultra preset. In both cases the average FPS in Diamond City stays at or above 40 and the 1% loss remains about 30. This is good news considering that Diamond City is one of the more demanding areas of the game. Apex Legends runs slower than somewhat weaker cards from AMD. At 1080 resolution and low settings, the card averaged 71 FPS and provided 1% loss of 46. Dropping the resolution will increase the FPS to 99 FPS and 62 FPS respectively. And while good enough for multiplayer, this is a bit slower than what I expected. Unlike the previous game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a single player title, so my FPS requirements are a bit lower. 45 or above for average, 30 or above for the 1% lows. There are a few combinations that can deliver something close to that. 1080 as low settings will net you 50 FPS for the average and 33 for the 1% lows. Increasing the quality settings to low will drop that average to 39 and more noticeably the 1% lows to 26. Now I played games like that just fine but the drop in resolution will allow you to keep both the low settings and more respectable frame rates. It could be that the GTX 760 runs CS2 quite well. But with the card being bottlenecked by the system, the only thing to be done for now is to acknowledge the same FPS numbers across all three tested resolutions. The average ran between 115 and 133, and the 1% low stayed in the 60s, occasionally reaching 70. Like with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I used the CAN benchmark from Borderlands 3 to figure out what would be the resolution and quality settings needed to get a 1% lows figure of 30 or better. 1080 resolution and very low settings seem to be a bit too easy, since the GTX 760 averaged 57 FPS and provided 1% lows in the 40s. The game is still playable when increasing the settings to low, with the average now at 48 FPS and 1% lows at 36. Medium settings however require a resolution drop to 1600 by 900 to remain playable. The numbers are now at 47 and 33 FPS respectively. While they say that fortune favors the brave, Going to high settings will require another resolution drop. At 
720, the Cognum averages 37 FPS and the 1% loss drop ever slightly under 30. There is a marked difference between presets starting with medium, so considering tweaking one of these two letter combinations if you plan to play the game using this card. X-Defined runs well on the GTX 760 at low settings. 1080 resolution has the card averaging in the mid 80s, while the 1% low staying above 60. 1600 by 900 runs a bit better and would probably be the better option for this game, with the average FPS now at 113 and 1% lows in the mid 70s. You can get these metrics even higher, to 152 and 96 respectively, but at the cost of resolution, 1280 by 720. Resident Evil 4 and Far Cry 6 do not like Kepler, or any DirectX feature level 11.0 card for that matter. But this is nothing new, so let's move on. Fortnite was the first game I actually tested with the GTX 760 after I got it fixed. Still, I kept getting random crashes which were bad news for a board I thought I fixed. Dropping the GPU frequency by a mere 50 MHz had the card running just fine. In performance mode the card got 136 FPS for the average and 61 for the 1% lows at 1080 resolution. As the pixel count is reduced, the performance increases and the card averages 175 FPS at 720 resolution. The 1% loss however increased to just 70. This behavior is not something new though, and it was noted on other 2GB cards as well. The smaller map in Fortnite Reload has the card running at higher FPS numbers as seen on screen. 1080 resolution translates to an average FPS of almost 200. The 1% lows were a contrasting 63 FPS. Now, one would expect an increase of performance as the resolution drops, but the same smaller map now has our GPU being bottlenecked by the rest of the system, as seen in the almost identical results at the lower resolutions. Like Borderlands 3, Terminator Resistance was a nice surprise when testing the GTX 760. While I did gather numbers at low settings to have a like for like comparison with other cards, you should aim for something above average. 1080 resolution and high settings will have the Kepler card average in the mid 50s and more importantly, provide a 1% loss of 36. As I said, this is better than what I expected. Unlike a lot of the other games tested, Overwatch 2 is one of the titles that will run your GPU into its power limit. However, the GTX 760 left AMD's Pitcairn GPU in the dust at 1080 low settings and managed an average of 160 FPS and 1% lows of just above 120. There is no real reason to drop the resolution, except just to check for a platform bottleneck. However, the FPS scaled almost perfectly linear with the drop in pixel count, and almost doubled at 720 resolution where the pixel count is half of the full 1080. The card runs well in Dota 2 at 1080 resolution and low settings. The rendering scale was at 100% and the GTX 760 averaged 97 FPS and provided 1% loss of 52. I find it hard to believe that a 170 watts card runs worse than the 55 watts contemporary. It seems that this one works in mysterious ways. For some odd reason, control didn't run on the GTX 760. No amount of underclocking would help. Exclusive full screen or windowed mode all ended up with me losing control over the now non responsive PC. I'm far from being a master in Creech, but I'm learning. Out of curiosity, I decided to slot in my other Kepler card, the Hercules with a Z GTX 770. And the game ran fine, so this is an issue with my GTX 760. GTA 5 ran perfectly fine at 1080 resolution and low settings. The GTX 760 averaged 120 FPS and provided 1% loss of 61. Not too much to add for this title, except the usual feel free to trade the excess performance for better visuals. And this is especially valid since the game will recommend better settings than what I use for testing. One of the reasons I keep Warframe in the list of games to test GPUs is that it behaves a lot like Furmark and turns up the power consumption of any card to its maximum. Despite all my fears, the GTX 760 showed no signs of crashing. At 1080 resolution and low settings, it managed an average of just above 220 FPS and a 1% loss of just shy of 120. Plenty of headroom here to improve the visuals. All in all, a card with some issues. Some games will run really well, relatively speaking, while others will either crash, not start or perform poorly. I cannot fault the GPU for all of these, and while some issues affect all Kepler cards out there, some of them could be just due to the previous owners of my sample, and maybe my repair skills. At prices of 30 USD or less, the GTX 760 is not a terrible buy if you're only interested in DirectX 11 titles. It is definitely better than the 40 USD GT 1030s I kept seeing in my market, that's for sure. 
As I mentioned already, I bought mine as defective with a missing screw and spring to properly hold it together, a busted VRM and a missing heatsink for said VRMs. Leave a comment by the way if you think that there is a connection between the last two. What puzzles me is that the instabilities I encountered did not seem to be correlated to anything, at least to me. The card survived Fermag despite its toasty 75 degrees temperature and full 170 watts power draw. Yet Fortnite required me to drop the GPU clock by 50 MHz, less than 5%, and Control noped out regardless of resolution or GPU frequency. But despite its issue, this was a card fun to play with. Anyway, we'll stay in the 2GB ROM for a little longer. If you enjoyed this kind of videos, then you know what to do. As for this one, well, we're done. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it, and I'll see you for the next one.